We've talked a lot about how to drill a well, but obviously we drill a well with a purpose in mind, and that is to actually produce oil and gas. And in these series of lectures, um, I'm going to talk about what's involved with that. The next step after we be, uh, get beyond uh, all the mechanics of how this works is to look at the economics. I'll be making some references to the economics uh, throughout this discussion, but again, trust me, that's coming up next. So we're going to talk about uh, fundamentally what do we have to do to begin the flow of oil and gas, and then once the material gets to the surface, what do we need to do to get it into a form that it can be sold, and what do we have to do over time to keep it flowing and going, so to speak. This is a Christmas tree. This is what a completed well really looks like. Uh, not very remarkable, is it? And it's something that you're not used to seeing. One of the remarkable things I saw many years ago um, is a, an oil well that my wife's family had invested in. And literally, I went out there expecting to see pump jacks, and there were no pump jacks to be seen because this was a new field, it was very high pressure, and literally the oil is flowing uh, under its own pressure from down in the formation. And so I saw these uh, rubber hoses that were transporting the oil to the tank batteries. And one of the more amazing things I watched was I literally would see the hoses jump on the ground because the oil was under so much pressure. Obviously, these were uh, brand new wells. Throughout the series of this lecture, I've given you a lot of YouTube videos that I want you to click on. This particular one is uh, under two minutes, and it's going to give you time lapse of the process of drilling a well. What I want you to note in there is two things. First of all, how relatively quickly the drilling is completed versus the completion of the well. And also, just as a test, can you tell me what's going on uh, during the well? For example, can you tell me, identify in the uh, video when they begin to set casing? And you should be able to. Uh, and then see how much activity is still on the well pad to uh, finish the completion process even though the rig has been taken away. So enjoy that YouTube video. Then we want to talk about fracking. Again, I have an excellent YouTube video. It's fairly long, six minutes. About the first half of it is an excellent review of horizontal drilling uh, techniques and procedures. And the latter half of it is, discusses the hydraulic fracturing process. <clears throat> so I would like you to stop this video and watch the entirety of that video. Okay, I was serious. I really hope you watched that video. So if you didn't, stop cheating. Go back and watch that video. Excellent introduction of, of what it means to uh, frack a well. Again, fracking itself is not new. It's been around for lots of years. And certainly you can also frack vertical only wells, but the difference is you're only fracking perhaps a few hundred feet uh, of a productive zone, so the process is a lot less involved. Later on, when we look at the economics, you're going to see that serious money is involved with fracking these long uh, horizontals or the long laterals <clears throat> to include potentially a third or even half of the total cost of drilling and completing the well. So it's a very expensive process. One of the criticisms of, criticisms of fracking is that it does take a lot of water. Uh, it depends how much water it takes depends on the length of the lateral and also the types of formations that you're fracking into. But as an average, you could say it takes between three and four million gallons of water to do that. How much is three to four million gallons of water? Imagine a football field, not necessarily the end zones, but just the goal line to goal line. Dig a pit, uh, dig down about 10 feet, flatten it out, so make this huge football sized swimming pool. That's probably about three and a half million gallons of water. So you can see there's a lot of water involved in this process. Well, once you're done completing the well, then it's time to actually get it to flow. Uh, when a well has been fracked, usually the fluid will, uh, because of the force of all you shove down it, it will begin to produce itself on its own. Uh, in an older, more established well after a workover, or one that just doesn't have as much pressure, you may have to physically remove the water from um, the well and the well head, uh, I'm sorry, the well bore, so that the, the flow of hydrocarbons will begin. This is a process called swabbing or another process called jetting. And really swabbing is just a tool that's got cups like that that they run down a, uh, a wire line, they pull up, and they take the water out. <clears throat> so we've got to get the thing flowing 
so we can get the money going. We talk a lot in this class about um, horizontal wells, and that's appropriate because that's where a lot of the drilling activity is happening these days. But don't forget the basic physics of a conventional uh, or vertical well, which is there are things that are pushing the oil toward the wellbore. Obviously, you're counting on that over time so that you can get that oil to the wellbore so you can extract it. <clears throat> on the slide, it has lots of references to the ways it can do it. One is just the, the basic principle of depletion of the things under pressure underneath them. When you poke a hole in it and give it a pathway, it's going to naturally flow. Some of that has to do with the dissolved gas coming out, just the pressure of the rock, uh, the idea of a gas cap, that there's gas above it, and uh, the pressure, the gas is under high pressure, and it wants to push down on the oil to bring it up. Sometimes it's water pushing it from below. Uh, it could be gravity, just having the oil go to a place where the, uh, the well bore is, and it can be some of all the above. And on the chart, it talks about the various productivities. Typically, a natural gas well in a, in, in a conventional well, you're going to get the majority of the gas out. The oil, not nearly the case. Only about a third, usually, with traditional recovery methods before you get into the um, increased or the enhanced uh, sorts of things. I'll stop now because we're going to bring into the mix the proverbial pump jack in the next video.